Thank you, Chairman Kelly. Uh, first, let me uh, welcome Ms. Estenos, Ms. Fox, and Dr. Friedhof. It is uh, great to uh, have you here in the uh, committee with us, even if we're just here electronically. Um, for Ms. Fox and Dr. Friedhof, I want to ask about the uh, problem of science in the last administration, uh, which was routinely ignored and even disparaged. And that was done on a repeated, consistent, systematic basis. I think any notion that this was a coincidence or a fluke is, is uh, living in a dream world. Um, and I know that Administrator Regan has pledged to take a look at all of that uh, disparagement and violation of science. Um, and in the conversation that we had, um, it was clear to me that he was going to look at who and what and where and when, uh, but not at why things went wrong. And I would encourage you, if you're confirmed, to make sure that you're answering the question why. Because if this was systematic, we need to know who was behind it. Um, when January 6th happened, I pushed very hard in the Department of Justice to make sure they weren't just challenging the people who came through the windows and doors of the Capitol, but looking upstream to who might have been behind it, who might have been organizers, funders. Um, and I think you need to have the same conversation with your employees. And my question to you is going to be one for the record, because I want you to have a the chance to sit down and answer it you know, fully um, and not under the pressure of my five minute limit. And that is what's going to happen when people come forward to disclose things that were done wrong at EPA in the past? Um, are they going to be told we're not interested, go away, we're looking forward, not backwards? Are they going to be told we're not really interested, but why don't you go down to that overworked inspector general? Maybe uh, they'll take an interest there. Are they going to be told look, this really damaged an important agency, we're taking this seriously, and here's our system for dealing with your concerns, here's who's going to hear you out, here's how we're going to coordinate the different stories that we're hearing, here is what our response plan is to the predicament that we've been left with. So uh, I hope that you can all answer that, and I would appreciate it very much if you gave that some time uh, and attention and answered it as a question for the record. Um, Ms. Estenos, welcome. I'm delighted that you are here. Um, I hope that we can bring you up to Rhode Island to visit the park that is going in along the Blackstone River. It's a slightly unusual park because it's made up of lots of old historic mills and uh, parts of the early Industrial Revolution, which were joined together for power uh, by the Blackstone River. And now it's a very unusually, it doesn't have borders like a lot of parks. It has, it's like jewels strung along the string of the uh, Blackstone River. And um, I hope very much that you'll come and, and see it and help us turn that into the facility that it really should be. It's just gotten started. Um, but I wanna talk generally with you and put a flag up about the problem of water, uh, waters and coasts being overlooked. I'm thrilled that you're from the Everglades. You know what a coast is. Um, you know what salt water is. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, the Land and Water Conservation Fund, I have complained about for years for its upland bias. In fact, I'm filing legislation to rename it the Upland and Freshwater Conservation Fund so that any pretense that it treats coasts and saltwater fairly is removed and we can set up a coasts and saltwater conservation fund that can, I hope, stand on its own uh, and have the resources that upland and freshwater gets. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers has a flood program that is just horrible for coasts compared to what it does for upland and inland. And the Department of the Interior is named Interior, so it's not exactly a coastward facing agency. So, you know, our coasts are seeing unprecedented hazards from sea level rise, from uh, warming of the seas, from upheaval in the biota and in the fisheries, and from uh, really catastrophic storm risk. Rhode Island is right in the target area for that as a very coastal ocean state. 
So um, I just hope that as you go about your responsibilities, you will make sure that this long tradition of overlooking oceans and coasts gets whittled back. Um, we even saw it in the Biden infrastructure plan, which is extremely weak on everything having to do with oceans and coasts. It's like there's a missing section on oceans and coasts. So um, I'm going to be a persistent uh, uh, nag, I guess, uh, of the Interior Department to pay more attention to oceans and coasts. And I just wanted to lay the marker down right now. And if I have any time left to ask you for a quick response. Um, yes, Senator, I'm, I'm happy to respond to that. When you're born on an island, it's all coast. Uh, my husband and I have raised our family um, in Broward County, Florida, which uh, regularly experiences now several times a year what we call sunny day flooding, which is essentially just the ocean coming and occupying our streets. So um, the amount of work that needs to be done to build coastal resilience is, um, is really, and from an interior department, the equities that we have on the coast um, are incredibly significant. And so if I am confirmed, um, coastal restoration, coastal resilience, these will be uh, high priorities for, for me um, and uh, in terms of the Fish and Wildlife Service and the National uh, Park Service. And I look Good. forward well, to we'll visiting Good, we'll be in touch a lot, and I welcome you and thank you. Thank you.